Meet Mr. Unicorn Sprinkles. That's right, that's his name. That's what happens when you let a three-year-old and a four-year-old name your dog. We got him a couple months ago. He's a new addition to our family, and he's just a young little pup who's happy-go-lucky. And over the last couple months, I've been trying to potty train him and teach him tricks and just kind of, you know, make sure that he grows up to be a good dog. And it really got me thinking that puppies and junior developers have a lot in common. And I know that sounds funny, but let me elaborate what I mean by that. First off, they're just really happy to be here and they're kind of learning how things work in your household. Same way that junior developers are very happy to get the first job and they're just learning how things work in your code base. They don't mean any harm when they do something wrong. They're just learning, they're new to this house and they wanna do their best, just like a junior developer would be at a new job. When they make mistakes, they're not doing it on purpose. It's just because they don't know what they're supposed to do. Also, puppies love being praised when they do a good job, just like junior developers. They love being told that they're a good boy or a good girl. They love it when they do something right and their tail wags and you scratch them behind the ear and you pat them on the head and you say, good job. Junior developers are the same, except you don't really want to go scratching a junior developer behind the ear because that'd be kind of weird. But they still appreciate the praise, just like a puppy does. Isn't that right, Mr. Sprinkles? Isn't that right, Mr. Sprinkles? Oh, you nibble my nose. And while they don't understand all the rules, they're trying their best, and they just wanna please you, and they wanna do a good job. And another thing that junior developers and puppies have in common is that if you don't train them right, and you just let them run free, they're probably gonna destroy everything you own and shit all over everything. Just like a junior developer would if you just let them roam free in your code base. And if you don't train them right, they're still gonna grow up and be dogs, but they'll have such bad habits that it'll be really hard to retrain them, just like a junior developer would. If you don't train a junior developer properly, they're gonna have terrible habits that'll be very difficult to break, and it's gonna make them very undesirable to keep around later on. So make sure that you train your junior developers right so that they grow up and be good dogs. Wait, that's not what I meant. But you get what I'm saying, right? So with all of that said, Mr. Sprinkles is just not having it anymore. He really does not want me to hold him any longer. Um, I, I'm pretty sure he might just poop on my floor right now. But with that said, here's a few tips to make you a better junior developer when you start your first job. So one of the first things that you can do that will make you a much better junior developer when you get that first job, you're gonna need to understand how to debug code. So make sure to take a little bit of time and learn how to use your debugger, whether it be in your IDE and knowing how to debug your backend code, or whether it be on the front end and learning how to use your dev tools. That's gonna be very beneficial for you. When I got my first job, I did not know how to debug any code and all of that stuff was very alien to me and it took a lot of time for me to learn it and it made me feel like I should have taken a little bit of time to learn that before landing my first job. So make sure that you know how to use your dev tools, make sure that you know how to step in and out of code, how to step over code, how to check expressions, how to use your inspector, how to use your console, how to use your network tab, how to use all the things that your dev tools have have and that your backend debugger has on your IDE. Learn to use those things, even if it's for a week or two when you're just learning how to code, try to watch a few YouTube videos just to get a better understanding of it. So that way, when you get your first developer job and you have to debug code for the first time, you're not just completely lost and have no idea what to do and you've kind of at least seen it or seen someone do it on YouTube so then you don't have to feel that you're just really dumb because it made me feel really dumb when I had to ask help when someone told me to debug something and I had no idea what they meant by that. It was something that I didn't know and it really, really kind of put a damper on my spirits when I, when, you know, that second week at my first job, when they gave me a small little bug to fix and they told me to go figure out what's wrong with it. And when they told me to like debug it with the dev tools and I had no idea what I was doing and I had to ask for help, that was, that was pretty tough, but asking for help is okay. And that's what I'm going to lead into for the next tip that I'm going to give you. It's okay to ask for help. Many junior developers, myself included, you know, when I first got that first job and they gave me those first few tasks, I felt that I really should have known how to handle the problems that they were assigning me and I didn't and I would wait to ask for help. And even though I know that many of those developers that were there were 
were actually anticipating me asking for help and they would come around and be like, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? Do you need any help? And I'd be like, oh, I'm okay. I'm just figuring it out. No, no big deal. And they knew I needed help, but they just wanted me to ask them because they wanted to give me time to figure it out on my own. And that's the thing. When you're a junior developer and you're stuck on something, you're probably not gonna figure it out on your own. Hell, I've been doing this for three years and when I get stuck on something, I know I'm not gonna figure it out on my own. And now that I have more experience, I know when to recognize that I'm stuck and I ask for help sooner than later because you don't wanna spend all day being stuck on something that you're not gonna be able to fix because one, you're wasting the company's time by doing that and two, you're not being very productive and it kind of makes you fall behind which then makes your team fall behind. So it's okay to ask for help. Don't be scared to ask for help, especially if you're a junior developer. The more questions, the better. But before you ask for help, make sure that you search the problem, make sure that you Google it, make sure that you exhaust all the resources that you have to find the answer on your own before you go asking for help. Because the worst thing that you can do as a junior developer is go ask for help, and then the first thing that someone tells you is, have you Googled it? And then you kind of have to look at them and be like, no, I haven't Googled it. And then they tell you, well, go Google it and see if you can find the answer and then come back. So make sure that you try to find the answer first. So that's kind of like a, a side tip. Always try to find the answer before you go asking for help, but don't be scared to ask for help. One more thing, learn from your mistakes. There's nothing more frustrating than having to help someone with the same problem over and over time after time. And it happens, sometimes it happens to me where someone showed me how to do something months ago and I didn't document it and I forgot how to do it and then I have to go and bug them for the same exact thing. I've been there, it's probably gonna happen to you, but learn from your mistakes and learn to document things when someone helps you with something because that way, if you do come across the same issue later on, you don't have to go and ask that same person because if you realize that this is a common problem that probably happens, and most of the time the person that helps you is gonna tell you that this is a common problem that happens, just jot those things down because then you can go back and refer to that and not have to bother the same person again for help. Because although most people are not gonna mind helping you out, it does get pretty annoying if someone comes to you with the same problem over and over and you have to fix that same problem over and over time after time. Don't be that person that bothers someone with the same problem you know, every few weeks because you didn't wanna write it down or you just can't remember. I have a crazy memory and I'm able to remember a lot of stuff and even I forget stuff and some people might feel the same way like, oh, I have a good memory, I'll remember that. Trust me, you're gonna be looking at so much code, you're gonna be reading so much documentation, you're gonna be going through so much stuff that's gonna be very hard for you to understand and you're gonna be learning a whole bunch of new things and things are gonna escape you. So make sure that you learn from your mistake, you jot things down and you don't bother the senior level developers over and over with the same problem when you're a junior developer. One more tip is take your time. I remember I would try to rush through things, I wouldn't think my problems through and I would just try to get code committed as fast as possible because I felt that it would make me look good. But then I would get code reviewed and it would be like, no, you shouldn't do that like this, you should do this like that instead. And many of the times that's gonna happen anyways in code review because a senior level developer is gonna look at your code and know that you can do something more efficiently or write something a lot cleaner. But over time, you just need to get better with that because getting something done faster isn't always better. It may make you feel good that you got it done quickly, but trust me, it's better to take your time on problems and don't feel like you're rushed. If you're noticing you're in an environment that they're constantly rushing you to get stuff done, that may be a sign of a bad development team. But with that said, if you're also taking a super long time to get stuff done, that may be a sign that you need to start asking for help sooner and being aware that you shouldn't take an extreme amount of time to do something, but it's okay to take your time when you're on certain problems. It's okay to go read up on problems that you're having, watch videos on problems that you're having. My job allows me to do that. They allow me to go on YouTube if I need to figure something out. They allow me to read stuff for a while if I'm being exposed to something that's completely new to me because I need to learn it. And being a programmer, there's a lot of learning involved and most good dev teams are gonna let you learn and let you take your time. So make sure that you take your time and you use it wisely, but don't take up too much time because then that's gonna affect productivity as well. You'll eventually find the balance. You'll eventually learn when to ask for help. You'll eventually learn how much time you should take on a problem and you'll, you'll learn how to better gauge your efficiency but when you're first starting out, keep these things in mind because you won't really know how much time is too much time, but you will know if you're trying to get something done very quickly. 
and fast isn't always better. So just keep that in mind. And one last tip that I'm gonna give for junior developers just starting out is everyone knows that you're a junior developer. It's not a secret. You know, it's the elephant in the room. Everyone is aware that you don't know what you're doing. The developers that hired you knew what your skill set was when they hired you. So don't be too hard on yourself. Know that they know what you're capable of and what you're not capable of. And most of the time they're gonna give you tasks that are maybe just on the cusp of your skill level, just a little bit harder than what you're able to do because they want you to learn and they want you to grow. So with that in mind, understand that you don't have anything to prove to anyone when you're there. If you're a junior developer, if you got that first job with no experience, if you're self-taught, if you're from a boot camp, if you went to college, even though you went to college, you're still the new guy and everyone there is probably gonna have way more experience than you. So remember that, it, don't feel bad about it, embrace it. It's good to be the dumbest person in the room. If you're the smartest person in the room, go find the new room, that's bad, that, that's terrible. That's gonna lead you to becoming stagnant. It's gonna lead you to getting bored. It's gonna lead you to just not being happy where you're at. I love being the dumbest guy in the room. Even though it's hard at times, feeling like you don't know anything, you're learning so much and you don't realize it because your peers, the senior level devs, the team that you're on is helping you grow and helping you become a better developer. And that's what it's all about when you're a junior dev. Learn as much as you can on the job, take your time, learn from your mistakes, don't be scared to ask for help, and take a lot of these tips that I told you. And remember, it's all right, it's your first job, you're a junior dev. No one's expecting too much of you. Don't try to be an overachiever by doing extra work on your free time because that's gonna lead you to burning out. And I talk about that in other videos as well. Just embrace that you got that first job, be happy and try to do the best that you can. Take some of these tips that I told you and just be happy that you got that first job. It's a great feeling. I, I remember getting the first job and I was just so stoked. I was so nervous during the interviews. I was so nervous that first week. I was so nervous that first month. Hell, I was probably still nervous a few months into the job, but after a while I, I felt comfortable and I started to grow into my position and I became better and better and better and you will too. So just remember that and think about these tips that I mentioned. They may help you when you get that first job. With all that said, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more content on becoming a self-taught programmer, learning how to code, or just tips and tricks and motivation for this kind of stuff that I'm talking about. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.